is a thousand times better than silent chanting. Why is the result of loud chanting magnified a thousand times over many other processes? Why? I, I want to know. <laughs> My dear sir, said Haridas, please listen to the conclusions of the Vedas and Srimad Bhagavatam. As Srila Haridas spoke, he floated in the ocean of love of Krishna and his explanations encamps encapsulated the essence of all scriptures. O oh, Brahmana, please try to understand that when any living entity, being human, animals, insects, birds, when they hear the holy name chanted by a pure devotee of the Lord, he goes directly to the spiritual world. By Kunta, after leaving this body. <laughs> the Srimad Bhagavatam states, O oh Lord, when your name is chanted by the unallowed devotee who has been purified by the touch of your lotus feet, and that holy name is heard even once by any living ent entity, it can immediately purify both the chanter and the listener. There is nothing disputable in the matter of the unallowed devotee purifying other living entities. Lower species, which do not possess the ability to chant the Lord's name, can be liberated simply by hearing the name chanting by a pure devotee. Arrivo. Arrivo. One who chants to him to the holy name to himself liberates only himself. But one who chants the Lord's name loudly liberates anyone who hears him. The sound of the Lord's name is beneficial for everyone. Therefore, the scriptures all assert that loud chanting of the Lord's name is a thousand times more effective than any other religious process. Oh, Brahman, listen carefully. It is easy to understand that a person who acts for the benefit of the entire society, including the lower animals, is certainly on the higher religious platform than a person who is simply concerned with his own liberation. <laughs> Only the human being has been endowed with the capacity to utter the Lord's name. An animal cannot. <laughs> if loud chanting can liberate these unfortunate animals who otherwise have no hope for liberation, then what is the harm in chanting loudly? A selfish person is interested in his own welfare, but a selfless devotee is concerned with everyone's welfare. If you understand this, you can easily determine who is on the higher platform. I must emphasize that loud chanting of the Lord's Holy Name is the most efficacious type of chanting. The foolish Brahman became even more infuriated by the inequivocal, inequivocal instruction of Srila Haridas. He angrily retorted. <laughs> now you are the, 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 the master of, of the Vedas. <laughs> you have, you, you, since, like you have propounded the, the seventh philosophical thought. <laughs> the other six are are destroying in, in the past of the time. <laughs> It was prof prof prophesied in the Vedas that one day in Kali Yuga <laughs> one low burn Sudra <laughs> will spread the Vedas. 
and now it's happening in front of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You see that here there is person who knows best what's the proper way. And now <laughs> I think that you should explain more. But Listen to me. If I discover that this is, these teachings from you are not according to the Sastra, I'm going to cut your ears and your nose. Huh? <laughs> Do you listen to me? Haridas simply smiled at the harsh, revengeful words of the fallen Brahman. Without another word, he walked away, chanting loudly the Lord's holy name. The scholars at the assembly were as sinful as that vicious Brahman, for they neither accepted the correct bona fide explanations of Srila Thakur, Haridas Thakur, nor did they condemn the offensive words of the wretched Brahman. Those men were Brahman in name only, while in actually, actually they were demons. Their residence was hell and they would suffer untold misery in the hands mm -hmm. of Yamaraj, the god of death. Mm -hmm. In Kali Yuga, the demons will be born as Brahman that harass and offend pious people. A few days after this incident, with Srila Haridas, the fallen Brahman contracted such a severe case of smallpox that his nose uh -huh. fell off. He was justly punished by Krishna for his offenses against the Vaishnav saint. Aggrieved, Haridas cites in deep concern over the sad state of the human society which was engrossed in mundane life. Mm -hmm. For a long time he had desired the association of other pure devotees, so he went to Navadvip where the Vaishnavas were overjoyed to see him. Sri Advaita Acharya Prabhu grasped him to his chest in a loving embrace and the other devotees showered their affection upon him. Similarly, he reciprocated their emotions. The atheists continued their offensive criticism of the devotees while the Vaishnavas continued their transcendental discussion of the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Anyone who listens with faith and devotion to these narrations will find eternal shelter at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord Sri Gorachanda. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Prabhu Amma, life and soul, I, Vrindavan Das, humbly offer this song to their lotus feet. Sladas Thakur Ki Jai, Sladas Thakur Ki Jai, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavata Ki Jai, Om Namah Karisi Harinam Sankirtana Ki Jai, Also to the various other forest creatures also. Yeah. <laughs> All became pure devotees and went to Vaikuntha by the mercy of Srila Haridas Thakur. Yeah. Thank you Srila Haridas Thakur. Yeah. And also behind the scenes, Sikkim Hiti Das Pramachari. The director of this drama. I'm very grateful to Sikkim Hiti Prabhu because he has manifested before our eyes very graphically the deep Nam Tattva, the truth of the Holy Name. Mm -hmm. And that has made a very deep impression on everyone. So I'm very grateful for this drama. And also to the Brahmin Gopal Chakravarti Ki Jai. <laughs> so, 
though he was very puffed up and very wicked, <laughs> and though he got disease and his nose fell off. But many years later, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Navadipta, and he came to the place called Aparad Banjan Pat, that's where our Paramgurudev's Devananda Gauriamat is, uh, then all the offenders and sinners who had made offenses previously, they all came and fell at his lotus feet. Mm. And then he uh, told him, oh, you should beg for mercy of Srila Haridas Thakur, and then he was liberated from, he got free from his offense, and he also became liberated. So by Mahaprabhu and his mercy and the mercy of his pure devotees, everyone, even the great offenders, get liberated. Someone can chant the name of Krishna for many lifetimes, but not get Krishna praying because of offenses. But those who will take shelter of the names of Gornitai, <coughs> they quickly become free from all offenses and also attain love for Krishna. So, thank you very much. I want to also express my gratitude to uh, Nitai and Manmohini for hosting me. Oh. Especially to Uddhav Prabhu and his whole family. <laughs> because by his hard service and compassion for everyone, he has manifested a very beautiful ashram here. So where our festivals could take place even at this time where no festivals are taking place. <laughs> now, everywhere they're saying, oh, the temple is closed, you have to wear a mask, no one can come. But Uddha Prabhu, he knows that this is only Kamsa Maharaj, that, that is the Chankazi. <laughs> Kamsa appeared as the Chankazi and tried to stop the Kirtan. But we should anyway go on with the Kirtan. So, actually, all over the world, devotees are making videos for this um, video for my Gurudev's Vyasa Puja. But mainly, there are only small three devotees, five devotees, and small groups. They're mainly, they don't have a chance to come together. So, we have been blessed. We're very fortunate mm -hmm. that we could be together and become sinking in the ocean of Harinam and Harikata. Tell a good day.